about being on the air. Those two. Jesus Christ. Oh, wow, you look great. No, not you. Him. You fucking pig. Take some advice from us and lose some weight, all right? Yeah. The retarded, we should talk. We're the retarded Starsky and Hutch. We're a mess. We've been on for, what, a year and a half now it's been? Ten years, it seems. Anyone even thinking about uh, getting satellite radio? Yeah. There you go. Thank, thank God, because that looks like our only option at this point. <laughs> aside from that, you, you know, I don't know, this Friday, CB Channel 19, everybody. Tune in, Breaker Breaker, good buddy, and Sophie and Anthony. I don't know anything else. We have been doing some great radio shows for each other. I mean, we've been cracking each other up for the last year and a half. Too bad you guys can't check it out. You should have heard last night's phone call. It got a two rating. <laughs> Pretty much it. Well, we're here tonight to uh, Over here. pay tribute to uh, little Jimmy Norton, everybody. I mean, Jesus, this guy... If this son of a fuck doesn't know when to leave a sinking ship... <laughs> The guy's got to be the best coattail rider I've ever seen in my life. And he knows right when to jump. Hey, hey, Jimmy, where'd you go? Oh, hey, he's gone. And then, you know, me and Opie look back, and hey, there's little Jimmy on our fucking coattail. And then someone had a fuck in a church, and uh, now he's Colin's fucking problem. And believe me, he'll know when you're fucking ticket chop. He'll go somewhere you won't see him again. We love him though. He's and, a fat um, kid in nothing. Yeah, what's that? He's a fat kid in nothing. A baloney, beef titted, piss faced nothing. You're absolutely right. Speaking of which, isn't this place too nice to roast Jim Norton? Shouldn't we be doing this in like a bathhouse or peatland or something? Church. Personally, I think it's going to be a waste of time. He's going to agree with everything we say tonight, right? Are you guys ready for the show or what? Yeah. One of the first stories we're gonna tell when we get back on um, satellite radio yeah. is my little trip with Rich Boss to South Beach where I watched him make out, true story, with a 57-year-old albino <laughs> grandmother. <laughs> we have so many stories to tell, but I think we're gonna start our new career with that one. You guys, you might remember him from Last Comic Standing. I think he was the last comic that was called to host this thing tonight. <laughs> Let's hear it for our pal, Rich Voss! Let's have a uh, big hand for Opie to love Sponge and Anthony. <laughs> That's the fucking most work they've done in a year and a half right now. <laughs> to see that his hair still looks like Frodo's feet. <laughs> you guys go on satellite, just don't let Paul McCurdo have sex on the space station. <laughs> Fucking guys. Jesus Christ. Anyhow, listen, we're gonna have a great time tonight. We're gonna uh, be roasting our, our, our little pal. A lot of you people may have never been to a roast. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of mean things said tonight. Uh, 
and they're all fucking true, okay? <laughs> Anything that you don't get that is uh, too inside, you know, maybe for just comics, believe me, it's fucking funny, okay? <laughs> all right? And if you really don't get it, it's really fucking funny, okay? We got cringe humor here, a big hand for cringe humor that uh, support, the support of the road. I was, I was just in uh, Sacramento working uh, last weekend and one of the guys from Cringe Humor out there said he was flying in for this roast. I'm going, how fucking empty is your life, okay? I didn't want to come from Jersey to do this bullshit. Anyhow, uh, we're gonna have a good time. Shut the fuck up, okay? This ain't the old o and days, NBC star, fuck yourself, okay? I'm not your shine boy anymore. <laughs> Opie, Anthony, give me a coffee. Anyhow. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> I don't even know how old they got in. I guess they took Pereno's spot. Anyhow. <laughs> all right, we're gonna introduce the dais. We're gonna get started. We're gonna have a great time tonight. Uh, I don't think Keith is here. Uh, they're shooting heroin somewhere. Okay, we're gonna introduce the dais. Our first, uh, our first person on the dais, uh, Vanessa Hollingshead. Where's Vanessa? <laughs> Vanessa will be coming. Vanessa was on the uh, roast last year. She was great. Vanessa Hollingshead, folks. You would have. You know where you're sitting. Vanessa's been doing stand-up for a while. Her fucking comedy calendar has more holes than Amadou Diallo. Uh, Vanessa, you're over there. Hey, you guys, we can't see him, so point to wherever the person's supposed to be sitting if you can, all right? Uh, who's our next, uh, you know what? Might as well bring fucking dummy up, Colin Quinn, right here. <laughs> The reason, the reason Colin talks so fast on his show, because he just wants to get to the act four before the show is canceled. <laughs> uh, hey, listen. Listen. Don't fucking kiss his ass. He's failed more than anybody. He's used to it, okay? Remote control. Remote control? <laughs> I can't believe you put Mario Joyner in the audience. Uh, uh, our next guest, uh, Jim Florentine, a big... Jim Florentine. You guys know Jim, uh, Jim right now, he's, he's a big hit on uh, Crank Yankers, a big hit on Crank Yankers. I'm not saying that he takes the show seriously, but the other night he was arguing how clever Jeff Dunham is, okay? It's an inside joke. The comics are laughing. Once the comics laugh, that's all that fucking matters. I gotta see that. You know what sucks? When they showed that video of Keith, I didn't realize I wore the same suit last year. What are the fucking odds? I'm putting this suit on going, did I wear this one last year? What are the odds one to one? <laughs> Give me a long fucking night. I'm fucking allergic to your sweater. Anyhow, Jesus Christ. Our next act coming up, Patrice O'Neill. Uh, I, uh, I, I, before, you know, we did all this, you know, got this together, I did some research on Patrice and I looked up his family tree. There are still four cousins living in it. <laughs> What a surprise, he, he's got a red drink. <laughs> you know, and, hey, let me tell you, Patrice's career is fucking skyrocketing, man. He's all over, he's on a new show coming out. Yeah. Now when he does a college, he gets $5,000 a show for a college. Uh, for an extra thousand, after the show, he'll walk out to a pasture and let the college kids tip him over. <laughs> wow. wow. Uh, our next, How many more stage. times are you gonna do Shout that out, show? Shut up, we're done with you. 
all right? This ain't why don't you add your daughters to the joke? Shut up. Take it, all right? all right? You know why you're sitting at the end there? So I don't know. Take it over. Let's Anyhow. Listen. Shut up, you fucking buffet. Who here has some money for his daughter's Girl Scout cookies? <laughs> Fucking asshole, stop acting like you're original. <laughs> number 20, is that how many Oreo cookies you ate before the show? <laughs> Our next act coming up to the stage to roast Jim Norton tonight, Nick DiPaolo. Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> you know what? Uh, if you know Nick, Nick would be a great politician because he's great at covering up things. Just look at his hair. Uh, <laughs> before the show, I was talking to Nick and he was upset because somebody said he was really anti-Semitic and that was Mel Gibson's father. <laughs> But you can see him in the upcoming uh, movie, The Sal Richards Story, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> Our next act coming up, shut up, two out of three ain't bad, okay? <laughs> Do you want to get closer to Colin so you can... Anyhow, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because <laughs> if it wasn't for him, you'd be breaking down this room after the show. <laughs> All right, you're hanging on by a thread. Just get used to setting up scaffolding. <laughs> Our next act coming to the stage, a good friend, Ross Bennett. <laughs> Ross Bennett. Someone uh, the other day asked me to describe how Ross looks. I go, he's a cross between Harpo Marx and Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing comedy a long time. He used to perform for the troops in fucking Nagasaki. <laughs> Fucking, I'm on fire. God damn, I should quit fucking now. Uh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let me explain something to any of you. I'm big enough to have anybody thrown out. <laughs> you don't like the soup? Your girlfriend didn't mind it when my balls were smacking her in the chin last night. Sometimes you gotta go with the stock. You gotta do whatever you gotta do to get by. Our next act coming to the stage, Greg Geraldo. <laughs> Greg Geraldo. I'm not saying that Greg has a drinking problem, but his liver is so black and bloated, it looks like Patrice. <laughs> uh, our, our next act coming up, Laurie Kilmartin, one of the great writers of Top Crowd. Laurie, uh, Laurie just, uh, Laurie just bought an apartment up in Harlem, and coincidentally, at the same time, she started dating a Mexican guy. What some people will do to save on movers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that? People's personal life? You're on fire, baby. Keep oh, going. You're just mad because I said going. You're on fire. You're on fire. Jesus Christ. I know what I'm fucking doing no here. I'm fucking getting knows ready. Right. Shut so up. You're telling she married some Mexican guy she just met? What the fuck is wrong with you, boss? Don't bring up Lori's Mexican boyfriend that she met on the road. That's 10, and, years, <laughs> that's 10 years younger than her. You don't fucking. Yell out her fucking business like that. He's, he's right. It's true. It's not, but it's not like she's working anywhere where anybody will know it. <laughs> Uh, uh, isn't, isn't it weird that Patrice is talking too much and ruining the whole fucking flow of the show? Excuse me, stop trying to improv. Did you write that down? <laughs> oh, Jesus, we don't even need Norton tonight. <laughs> fucking hell, he should do nothing but bring. You know what? Norton here might get this show fucking canceled. Uh, our next act coming to the stage, Bob Levy, a good friend of mine. Bob Levy. Uh, 
when I told Bob, he asked me, he goes, where's the roast gonna be? I told him it was at Caroline's, <laughs> and he was scared that he would have to pay the two drink minimum. <laughs> The last time Bob worked in New York was Rochester. <laughs> Not that it wasn't that bad. Just tough to follow all the other killer stuff I've been doing. <laughs> Fucking unbelievable. Bobby Kelly couldn't make it here tonight. Bobby was supposed to be on a, and I'll get, uh, that's all right. Bobby, uh, Bobby on cringe humor was a breakthrough performer in the year 2003. The only fucking thing he broke through was his clothing, okay? <laughs> but he's somewhere on the West Coast introducing fucking Dane Cook, so. <laughs> Our next uh, uh, uh. Ben Bailey, come to the stage, Ben Bailey. Uh, anywhere where it says boring. to come back at me. No, you're over here. You're to the left, right it's here. It's not stupid, it says Norton. Oh, it does? Where's Ben? He's like, yeah, to the left. Over there. All right. Listen, you stupid ass, what does that say to you, huh? All right. Ben Bailey has been doing his joke. Ben Bailey Boulevard. Ben's been doing his joke, Ben Bailey Boulevard, for so long, there are six new houses and a strip mall on it. You, Keith Robinson? <laughs> no, that's who's dressing him. What's that? And now, and now the man that we're here to see, a big hand for probably my best friend in the world. I couldn't think of anybody better to roast and a better comic, Jim Norton, a big hand. I've never seen a 16th of a standing ovation before. <laughs> You've also never seen a crowd this big before. I know. <laughs> if you, what? that was funny, but if you ever grab the mic again, like you're in a fucking sitcom, I'm gonna smash you right in the face. The only reason he grabbed remember. it is he thought he saw balls on the end of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know. You know, that's why they ask me to do it every year. Because I prepare. Yeah. Shut your fucking face up. We gotta get through this fucking thing, you know, folks? There's gonna be a lot of shit said here. Hey, you know what? We're glad Jim wore his good flannel for tonight. <laughs> it's the one he wore in the 100th anniversary show on a uh, fucking, well, anyhow. Got a bill. Masabi, the guy running the show, a big hand for Masabi, he asked me. <laughs> He asked me if I would like to host this thing, and, and I'm thinking, you know, this is a fucking honor. Uh, you know, I love this man, uh, I love the club, and I told him, just let me know when. And then I'm thinking to myself, what a fucking inconvenience, because uh, I really am too big for this now. Uh, and plus, you know, another roast, I'd hate to, you know, I'd have to write new material, and you know how much I hate doing that. Uh, but what the fuck, I'm here, so. Uh, and, and the reason I, I just love being with Jim Norton and hanging out with him, because uh, it's so easy to meet girls when you're standing next to him. I mean, look at him, he's a fucking mess. I don't care how much, how funny he is, he's a fucking mess. So I look at his bald head, okay? Look at that, he doesn't wear it. He doesn't wear it for a fashion statement. It's what the bottle of Rid suggests. What does suggests uh, mean? I so Whenever I read them, I fuck it up. When I have that memorized. Trying to, stop trying to new, use new hip medicines. Stick, it's not stick to medicine. flu and I mean, cold and all that other shit. No, stop trying to be up. above everybody, I stupid. Just, listen, first of all. First of all, what the fuck I, is Riggs? Riggs? <laughs> Colin doesn't know, no. so none of us know. Okay, Riggs? 
Uh, I, 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 I couldn't break hear it through all that slurping saliva. I know. <laughs> We'll, we'll, so, we'll suggest something else, Fish. All I heard was... <laughs> <laughs> Can you pay $8,000 for a new tongue, you fucking idiot? <laughs> <laughs> Why do I take these fucking gigs? Uh, we'll break that joke down. It's what... I fucked it up. It's what the Bob of Rid recommends. Don't try it it's again. Shut up and move on. All right. And then, I mean, if you look at Norton, see, you look at his blinky eyes, all right? If you talk to Norton for 10 minutes, you gotta take fucking Dramamine. I'm starting to get him back. And then you look at his fucking... You Please at his... laugh at all Crockett Suits jokes so we can move along. <laughs> can I get through this? Nice. See, this is the worst thing they did was put fucking mics here. Get off the stage, <laughs> You're not used to this crew, huh? You're not used to this, Bob, without Artie Langson next to you, huh? I, I, what are you laughing at, fucking Benedict Patrice? O and A who? Listen, stop. <laughs> Look, like I told O and A. <laughs> Listen, don't cobble If a bitch stop fucking you, that don't mean you stop fucking all other bitches now. I'm gonna come back. Oh, yeah. I gotta exercise something, you motherfuckers. Jesus Christ. I'm willing to come to fucking XM Radio to be with these motherfuckers. That's because you can, that's the only thing you can spell. <laughs> I know I can pronounce it, Sarah. Hey, don't come back with that. We already hey, you should have closed with that. What's that? You should have closed with that. You know. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> What's it like not working in South Jersey? <laughs> Who are you gonna bring up here to eat whipped cream out of their ass? <laughs> Fucking Bodak. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they don't make a cummerbund big enough. <laughs> Fucking sort of talk to me in my home club like that. I can make a call right now. Lewis, where are you? Uh, oh, there you go, Drama. And you know, when you look at Norton, when you look at Norton, if you do have the, the strength to do it, uh, you look at those fucking skinny lips and you wonder, how can it kiss so much ass? You know, is every other fucking joke gonna work? All right, let's talk about his body. You ever see his fucking body? Oh, you ever seen with his shirt off? Fucking Ruth Buzzy has a better physique. How old are you that you had to use her, stupid? Huh? You're 51 years old. I know, that's why, the lady I, that's why the lady I made out with in South Beach was young. Norton's physique is so bad, he's a stand-in for the Pope. She was a Joanne Worley. Uh, that, that, how fucking funny is that? The Pope! <laughs> Moderately funny, now go ahead. Story. One night, uh, many nights, but one night, one night, me and Nort were doubling this girl, right? Yeah, right. Okay, so, so this is true. So, hey, by doubling, do you mean uh, paying her twice? No, she, <laughs> So we're doubling this girl, right? And What's your mother doing at Jim's apartment? Did he just do a mom joke? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Number 10, just half of Patrice. Anyhow. So, <laughs> hey, you know what? As long as this fuck is the one laughing, because that's who I got to deal with all week is this dummy. So we're doubling this girl, me and Norton. It's true, the lights were completely off. It was completely dark, right? So I think I'm titty fucking her. <laughs> Anyhow, we're gonna get this started. You guys are great. Thank you for coming out. Give yourself an applause. Please give her an O and A. Uh, I'd like to bring to the stage, you know him from Crank Yankers, Jim Florence. Uh, 
Uh, give it up for Rich Voss. Give him a hand. Oh, come on, leave him alone. He's the only man that lost on TV to the guy who did my laundry last week, so. <laughs> you see the shit that flies out of his mouth when he talks? He spits more times than a Jewish girl sucking cock. <laughs> Rich Voss and Michael Jackson have something in common. They're both men in their 40s that beg for hand jobs from teenagers. <laughs> It is a Norton Rose, but we get the boss first. <laughs> this is just so easy. He's the only guy who spends more time in a tanning bed than writing new material. <laughs> He's the George Hamilton of comedy. I should have did that one first. <laughs> should have done. Oh, Greg, speaking of Greg. <laughs> How do you guys know? Greg Giraldo's been in a lot of bad TV shows that never made down to the air. The only way he'll be in a good pilot is if he digs up one of the Wright brothers and fucks him in the ass. <laughs> Colin Quinn's here. Colin, the only thing sure to live in your NBC show is your recent marriage. Sorry. Nick DiPaolo's here. Uh, Nick, Nick has a lot, you know, Nick has a lot in common with the Butterfugos. He looks like Joey and he talks out of the side of his mouth like Mary Jo. I got one for Patrice, but I know he'll do it 30 more minutes if I say one word about him, so we'd like to get home tonight. The only thing bigger than his mouth is his belt. That's all I got. Jim Norton. If you guys don't know, Jim Norton likes to get shit and pissed on. I just want to preface that first. Jim, is that true? Uh, no. <laughs> And I lived with this creep for four years. He actually spent a lot, he actually saved me a lot of money because he drank so much piss our water bill was four bucks a month. <laughs> Believe it or not, Jim's actually a neat freak in some aspects of his life. I remember one time when he first got his new car, we stopped to get coffee and he said I couldn't drink the coffee in the car. That's how neat he was. Meanwhile, you know, I had to stand outside an hour just to drink the fucking coffee. Meanwhile, an hour later, some hooker's gonna be dropping turds on his chest in the back seat. You know, but I might spill my coffee. I would never waste them on my chest. <laughs> if you're not gonna eat them, don't get in the game. And if it's got corn in it, there's your vegetables. I don't know if you guys notice, Jim always walks around with a tissue in his pocket. He's constantly sniffling. He's probably sniffling because he knows any day now he's coming down with the AIDS virus. Coming down? Oh, and you guys, I don't know if you guys notice, MTV gave Jim his own show. Give him a hand. He does, seriously. You know, that's a real good move by MTV because he really appeals to teenage girls, his look, you know? That's like giving Michael Jackson a show on Nickelodeon. <laughs> the Twin Towers falling down is more comfortable to watch than Norton on TV. <laughs> Jim, good night, man. I love you. Jim Florentine. <laughs> Fucking funny, man. Jim Florentine, he is, you know, uh, me and Norton went out uh, for a uh, dinner the other night. That's uh, how I deliver it. I'm not gonna put up with this shit all night. I'll stand here for two fucking hours before I bring the next one. I got nowhere to go. I just bought a house today. Anyhow, I did, I closed on a fucking house. Anyhow, me and, me and fucking Norton, me and Norton went out for dinner the other night. And he ordered chocolate cake, and he asked the waiter to drop it on his chest. 
Lisa Lambinelli's not here. She just moved to the West Coast. Now she's by Hackwell. <laughs> Our next act coming to the stage. A big hand for Vanessa Hollingshead. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good to be here. Take it easy. <laughs> Not tonight. Not tonight. Um, Rich, nice tan. I can't uh, really knock Voss for tanning so much. She gets in half price because he's under four feet. <laughs> nice platforms. Um, you know, Voss, you can't hold on to a woman, but you'd have to pry last comic standing out of your cold, dead hands. <laughs> Before I start tonight, I need to address a rumor that last year, Ross Bennett wrote every single one of my jokes. Where for was he this year? <laughs> <laughs> to it. For the record, he only wrote about half of them and then he stopped because I wouldn't blow him anymore. <laughs> this year he didn't help me. I wanted him to, but his price went up. I refused to let a guy fuck me in the ass for jokes. But if I ever did fuck Ross Bennett, it would only be in my ass. That way I wouldn't have to look at his face. <laughs> it's an inside joke. It's nice to see so many, so many of the tough crowd, tough crowd gang tonight. You guys are great. You guys are the only group of performers I know that think making it is getting paid scale. <laughs> <laughs> tough crowd is a great show if you're male. You guys are like the McLaughlin group, only without the humor, political insight, and beautiful people. I think I'm losing them. I'm losing them. Way Actually, to read a crowd, dum dum. Shut up. Don't you've got don't you have dishes to clean? Listen, um Actually the ratings for the last last five minutes of Tough Crowd are one I'm not. Actually the ratings for the last five minutes of Tough Crowd are one of Comedy Central's highest. It's people getting ready to watch the week old Conan O'Brien show. Thank you. Jim. No, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. Where's my girls? Okay, Jim, how does it feel to be riding the coattails of a guy who started his career on a low-rated cable show and is now making a comeback on another low-rated cable show? Hi, Colin. Oh, that's a keeper? Okay. Colin, you used to star on Weekend Update on SNL. How does, it hear, how does it feel to hear people say, you know Tina Fey? Okay, okay. I just want, let's talk about, okay, no. Let me, thanks. I don't have any tits. Jim's got bigger tits than I do. You'd rather see Patrice's shirt off. Lori, I just want to say, Lori Kilmartin is a very funny woman. She's on the roast tonight. Lori spends weekdays slaving away, working on Tough Crowd, and then she flies off to headline around the country. It must be great to be on stage, Lori, and look into the kitchen and watch your boyfriend doing the dishes. I remember Lori had a huge crush on Greg Giraldo until you found out he lost his job as a busboy. I, I honestly didn't understand that one. Okay. Because you're in a drunken stupor you know, now. <laughs> you know, Greg is amazing. He's done for Hispanics in comedy what Jim Norton has done for Hispanics in comedy. <laughs> I feel I need to apologize to the hardworking wait staff here at Caroline's for the tabs being so low. Everyone on the roast is either a recovering alcoholic or a cheap bastard. I should know I fucked most of them. But don't worry, if we make a mess, Greg and his 17 brothers are waiting outside in a station where I can clean up. You know, Patrice, I didn't know until recently that what a huge fan of Richard Pryor's you were. And after listening to you, I realized that you speak for black America. I mean, after all, you are half of them. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, fatso. Wait, wait a second. Patrice, you are looking real good. Thank you. Until tonight, I didn't know they made football jerseys from hot air balloons. You 
better thank me, bitch. I know, I got my, my best joke on that one. Nick DiPaolo, how does it feel to be the only Italian-American not to get a guest role on The Sopranos? I did one last year, you stupid cunt. <laughs> That's slick. I'm I sorry. Didn't say that. Don't you see Nick I don't remember you again. saying that last night. Nick, uh, you always struck me as being one bad joke away from being a Vegas lounge lizard. Like Tony Clifton, only you don't have the alter ego that has a career. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Go get him, baby. We thought you were the one roast wonder, but you're proving him wrong. Go ahead. I will, baby. And I'll give you some later. You know, I was thinking about this, but the only reason Jim Norton can say he's been sober for 10 years is because shit isn't considered a controlled substance. <laughs> you might not know this, but Jim pays all his bills on time. But then again, hookers don't take payment plans. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> By the way, Jim, my mom wants you back on her lawn Thursday. Okay, I got, I, got a, I got a sweet story. Jim, I'll never forget my first and last date with you. You took me to see Schindler's List, and then you got a huge heart on when the little boy jumped in the toilet and said, there's only room for one. You said, not for long, Jew boy. You're a toilet with a shaved head. Thank you. Vanessa Hollins said. Vanessa Hollins said. What are the odds that she pulled it out? That was fucking, that was fucking good, so fuck it. Uh, to see a lot of comments that we're also talking about that you might not know that just throughout the community, like some of them that aren't here, like uh, Dan Natterman. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know Dan Natterman, but he was shaft in our last comic standing too. Uh, and I mean, he killed, but the good thing is, it's the first time he got fucked in 10 years. <laughs> uh, Todd Lynn, I don't know if he's here, but he's in a new play called Your Arm is Too Short to Box with God. <laughs> is he here? Is he here? He's just making left turns around the room. <laughs> hey, if you look at Norton's sex life, it's like a crime scene. Blood, fecal matter, and urine are usually what is left behind. I, why do I get fucking greedy? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, fuck with me, I'll bring Vanessa back. I, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. Get killed, you know that. You did. And if you need a writer next year, I need to get fucked, so what the hell. Uh, our next act coming to the stage, Nick DiPaolo. <laughs> I gotta call you in, Vanessa? Talk about a fucking hole. <laughs> Good to see uh, Rich doing what he should be doing in a comedy club, MCing. <laughs> suck Lewis's prick for this gig? All right. Uh, what do you get when you cross John Kerry's head with Rich's teeth? Sea biscuit. <laughs> Former druggy, alcoholic, but uh, you know, must be nice to know if they ever do the rich boss by you're an absentee dad too, right? Good kid. Yeah, you're absent. I asked your fucking daughter last night. You never around, okay? Now Four I know why she's a lesbian today. Okay. <laughs> 
This isn't an AA meeting, Rich. Wow, Vanessa chimes in again after that performance. You got a lot of balls. Holy, holy shit. Just stay seated, please. It's like somebody putting a cigarette on your clit and going, do it again. <laughs> I haven't got my best tip for you yet. <laughs> Voss is a Jew who takes in his pride. He's got a tattoo on his arm that reads Never Again, which coincidentally is the same tattoo every booker gets after he headlines their club. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, Vanessa, nice job, Vanessa. Only woman to sleep her way to the middle. All right. Uh, Vanessa goes out with a guy who's got lupus and he, he's losing a few of his body parts. Yeah. <laughs> they are, they chop him, but the only reason he you broke up with his uh, girlfriend always. because uh, he couldn't make her come with his big toe. <laughs> oh my God. Shut up, you fucking hoe. Uh, I work with Vanessa at Foxwoods Casino. She walked the reservation. <laughs> and now you're following me tonight. Again, another stellar joke. Boy, do you suck. Why don't you sew up that pussy and grow a dick? We might get a joke out of you. God damn it. What the fuck you do? Break your funny bone and forget to set it? Jesus Christ. I'm just you teasing. Want me. I do want you. I'm gonna have you. <laughs> You'll fuck a guy with a whole middle finger for the first time. Have a good uh. Oh, he never used me at that club. Fuck him. I don't give a shit if he dies tomorrow. All right, Greg Giraldo. I, I fucking auditioned at the comic strip. He goes, we already have an angry Italian. Then he wanted me to work at his club last year. I said, I already work for a guy with cancer. <laughs> I'm fucking kidding. He's a great guy. All three fifths of him. All right, let's get on with this. Huh? Damn! Greg Giraldo, come on, folks, give a hand to Greg Giraldo. He had his third fucking network deal that fell through. This guy's killed more pilots than Hamas. says how smart Greg is. I don't know about that. This is the only guy that went to college. He went to fucking Harvard. He has the same tax bracket as I am. <laughs> All right, that didn't have a pussy or a tit in it. It wasn't that funny. Right, right. Greg or, has a... Or, or a punchline. <laughs> yeah, take a drink of that fucking juice there, Jew boy. All right, man. Look how quiet it got in here. Who would have guessed that didn't go over in New York? All right, fucking Jesse Jackson had a point. Let me get to this. It's the only time I've ever agreed with a black guy in my life. Um, <laughs> now you're bringing up your dad. <laughs> no, actually it was your mother. <laughs> okay. Greg's got a wife who uh, he always talks about. He's not very fond of. I don't want to say Greg hates his wife, but she's the only woman I know who bleeds once a month from her lip. <laughs> once a month? <laughs> She's seen more black guys than an optometrist on Martin Luther King Boulevard. <laughs> Greg recently found out he's gonna be a daddy for the third time. I don't wanna say he's unhappy, but uh, I saw him stealing a coat hanger out of the coat check here at Caroline. <laughs> that, that, was, that was insensitive. <laughs> It sure was. That's what a funny is. Fucking ask Vanessa. Um, Laurie kill Martin. Where's Laurie? Laurie, stand up. Come on. Oh, come on. Laurie's. Laurie's very funny and has big tits. Which means she'll be at least as famous as John Goodman. <laughs> 
Larry, uh, you recently lost some weight. You look pretty good, but uh, you were a little heavy a few months ago when you went to Iraq. I don't want to say you were fat, but the only soldier that tried to fuck her over there was a blind cleric from Tikrit. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's too much for the Opie and Anthony crowd. Sorry. Three references in that fucking joke. <laughs> no amount of lip quivering could make that one go over. <laughs> Bob Levy, come on, Bob Levy. This is a guy. Wow. Okay, Bob. Big following. Fuck it. This is a guy who cho This is a guy who closes his act by licking blue cheese dressing out of the crack of an audience member. That's when you know you're a great comedian. Every time you do your closing bit, a dollar fifty goes to Paul Newman's charities. <laughs> Some psychological, what are you, fucked behind a salad bar as a kid? What happened there? <laughs> Colin Quinn, my fucking present boss. Give him a round of applause. Come on, he's in his late 70s. And he's out past 10 o'clock. Colin keeps saying he is my only friend in the show, in show business, you know? Well, at least I know I failed. <laughs> I'm hanging out with an ex-drinker, drug addict, stutterer whose idea of a good night is to marinate his balls in a cup of half and half and then sit there with his legs spread and a squeeze toy in his mouth until a cat licks his nuts like his pastor did when he was in sixth grade. <laughs> yeah, I know how to pick my friends. Chris Farley has more juice in Hollywood. <laughs> guy's dead. Shut up. <laughs> fuck, fat fuck. Look at Ross Bennett sitting there with a look on the face that he should have. Lonely and miserable. <laughs> Ross, I don't know you and let's keep it that way. Fuck it. Go... If I ever need a tweed jacket with suede fucking patches on the elbows, I'll give you a call there. Fucking Mr. Carter. Jim, you're in here somewhere. You're the reason I fucking came. <laughs> Motherfucker, where are you, you little ball prick? <laughs> so is this what it's coming to? We fucking roast strong middles from New Jersey? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why don't we get the fucking black bathroom attendant out here? Tell a few jokes about oh. him. <laughs> Jim does like to be peed on. He's the only guy known as Doc to ask for a urine sample. He brings in his pillowcase. <laughs> They're doing a movie on Norton's sex life. It's called The River Runs Through It. <laughs> Norton had to pay a transvestite double because Jim didn't have a chin that the guy could rest his nuts on. <laughs> I don't want to say Jim fucks a lot of dirty whores, but he makes his second income by selling crabs to the Iron Chef. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. I'm glad Nick Apollo. I think the only way really to follow that now is just have a human sacrifice come up here. <laughs> Fuck, when Patrice cringes, you know, <laughs> holy fuck. Where's, where's Keith when you need him? Huh? Where's Keith Robinson when, when you When did you get him? here? <laughs> uh, I don't want to say Norton, but Norton has been cocked more than John Mohammed's rifle. If you ever try to be topical again, I'll spit in your face. <laughs> if you spit <laughs> that high five at me. Uh, holy fuck, who's our next? This is fucking going good, man. All right, next, coming up, you're gonna love this man, Greg Giraldo. Thank you very much. Last comic doing a once you go back, you never go back joke. Nice suit, is it Hugo Bosch? <laughs> You wouldn't believe how excited this fucker was when he came back from last comedy. He said, hey, I got a lot of shoots. They're all Hugo Bosch. <laughs> Rich Boss, everybody. The only comic with jokes older than his teeth. <laughs> you know, you're really on the cusp of stardom when you got a co-headline with Corey Kahaney. Oh. Do not 
talk about my tax write off like that. <laughs> I don't want to say you're, uh, it's just about over for you, but last night I heard one of Lori Kilmartin's titties singing. <laughs> a fat lady, I call her uh, fat ladies. Cause she does, she's got huge tits, she's got giant tits. I mean, I'm sorry, Lori, you got big tits. So gonna, she's the only girl up here, she's the only person up here with tits bigger than Patrice, you gotta love that. She's the only person I've ever met that can get titty fucked by two guys at the same time who never actually meet each other. <laughs> You know what, in this day it's sort of pathetic. Half the people I know, and the other half are, the, first of all, fucking Ross Bennett with a, a fucking carpet for a jacket. I don't know what exactly the fuck you're doing. And Bob Levy, good to see you can pull yourself away from the blow dryer long enough to make it through the Lincoln Tunnel. Holy shit. Is every Jersey hack invited into New York City all of a sudden? What was Frank Del Pizzo couldn't scrape up enough of the toll? Jesus Christ. Bob Levy, you make Ross Bennett look like an up-and-comer. <laughs> Ross Bennett? Who's that insulting? Both of Both you. Both of you, yeah, I'm not exactly, I thought that was pretty clear, Ross, you fucking Ronald McDonald looking freak. Jesus Christ, look at you. I haven't seen a person so blatantly try to ride a weird face to success in comedy since Vanessa started dating Lucian. That's a good fucking joke, folks. And, uh, honestly, that was a I good one. I don't think it is. No, that was good. That was fucking hilarious. Well, look, this is an impressive panel. As Andy Warhol said, uh, in the future, everyone will be famous for 15 minutes, except for Ben Bailey. <laughs> good to see Ben Bailey, or as I call him, Ugly DC Benny. And of course, you know, look, I'm in the middle of a move, folks. I don't have a lot of time to write jokes and stupid, fat, fucking beady-eyed Bobby Kelly bails out at the last minute, so fuck him, that fucking closet faggot. Seriously, that guy, he has more, more stories about having his ass in the air and having people tickling his ass and shit, sticking things in his ass. Bobby, he's been on all fours more often than Modi during Fleet Week. <laughs> oh, he's gotta go to LA. He can't be here because he's gotta be in LA. When did Bobby Kelly ever accomplish anything that didn't come right on the heels of Dane Cook? He's out there doing Dane Cook's laundry, for Christ's sake. He shaved his head so he could cram it more easily up Dane Cook's ass. <laughs> He's got his head so far up Dane Cook's ass, he could actually see the hacky thoughts as they form. Oh, empty sketch. <laughs> the fact that you people like Dane Cook makes me want to piss on all of you, honestly. <laughs> Bobby Kelly was stupid. Nah, the chills that. Nah, the chills that. Somebody tell that fat Samoan cocksucker that if you say anything in a gay accent, it's going to sound gay. Could you just say that? New York, motherfucker. Nah, the chills that. <laughs> Well, Lisa Lampanelli, of course, is not here, which is a shame. I'm guess, I guess she's out ste stealing one of Voss's black jokes or whatever it is. And, uh, she is a dirty whore, Lisa Lampanelli, you gotta admit. She's been covered in more black goo than the La Brea tar pits. <laughs> Sue Costello, who's not here. I thought she was gonna be here too. Uh, you fuckers don't even know who she is. She's on the show a bunch of times and stinks, but uh, you know, Sue Costello, Sue Costello, what can you say about someone that dated Chris Mazzilli and was considered the pasty, unfunny one in the couple? Again, that's a pretty good one. I mean, whether you get it or not, that was a pretty good one. Colin, of course, good to see Colin here and uh, I don't have a lot of time to think of this one, but uh, you know, a lot of times the show gets compared to politically incorrect, which is not fair, it's totally different. We tackle things that, were, that they didn't have the balls and the courage to tackle on politically incorrect, like, uh, like ball waxing and anal beads, and, uh, and there were other, other differences too, like politically incorrect was hosted by a guy in his 40s. Which was, uh, <laughs> right, that one, no, that one did suck. That one did suck. That one did suck. Hugo Roth. <laughs> How about a hand for my opening hat? <laughs> Opie and Anthony hosted this whole thing, which is great. They sit around doing nothing for a living, which is uh, a lot like the writers on Tough Crowd. <laughs> um, two people fucking a church, and now Norton's back to middling. You know? Maybe there is a 
of God, let's be honest. If I had known two fucking two people fucking in a church would have brought Norton back down to earth, I might have taken Nick's wife up on her offer. <laughs> deserve everything that happened to you. You really do. Just for putting Paul Mercurio on the radio. What the fuck? I don't care. I don't care if he's here. Paul Mercurio. Maybe next time you can get D.F. Sweetler to start a gangbang in a temple. of course, which, you know, Patrice is here, and, uh, it's, you know, he's having a lot of success now, which I hadn't seen him around for a while. He's been gone, and apparently he's been, at first I just assumed he'd swim out to sea for mating season. Turns out he's having a lot of success. He's being very successful. He's been cast in a, in a new show. He's going to give him a hand for being in a new show. How about that? Survivor, he plays the island. Uh, two teams of survivors are gonna battle it out in the folds of his neck fat. Gonna see what, uh, what and now we get down to this syphletic little cocksucker. What? Why are we even roasting you, you fucking freak? Why are we roasting Jim Norton? Normally you have to roast someone for accomplishing something or for uh, doing something or for reaching a milestone. This is the first time we've ever honored someone for finding a new precancerous growth on his head. <laughs> <laughs> and now with that acting ability, I can't believe one of your sitcoms wasn't picked up. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're overacting in jokes. Move on. Uh, strange you have the energy left since you were just standing on a milk crate in a sports bar and fucking hula hands two hours ago. <laughs> By the way, uh, Norton, I, I'm shocked you can make it out tonight. I would have thought you were home expanding your, your fucking what should happen to Martha Stewart while she's in jail chunk. <laughs> He always tackles the controversial subjects. You know, I'm sick of people saying you tell the truth. He tells the truth. He's honest. He tells the truth. That's the biggest fucking pile of horse shit ever. How can you think someone tells the truth when he lets hookers shit in his mouth and yet claims he was never molested as a child? Seriously. Just fucking come clean, you dirty boy diddler. Just admit it. You were touched more often than Jim David's prostate. about a guy who'll fuck a transvestite hooker in the ass without a condom, but then only flies Continental because they have the newest fleet. <laughs> that logic is about as faulty as Patrice's pancreas. <laughs> He's got the dirty diabetes. Took a little extra. And I think that might be it. Well, thank you, and I love Norton. Norton's a hilarious, smart, funny guy. Funny, funny motherfucker. Greg, Greg Zorado. A big hammer, Greg Zorado. Got a piss? Well, now we're gonna do a video. We're gonna bring up Lori and then do a video. Okay. We're gonna bring up Lori and then do a video after it. You know, uh, you know Colin's prostate's no good. Let him go take a piss. <laughs> going to see the ratings from the rerun. Anyhow. <laughs> I got a lot of fingers tonight. You gotta start smiling. This is it. Our next act coming to the stage, one of the riders for Tough Crowd, Laurie Kilmartin. <laughs> puts himself in an oven once a week. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, 
I'm no doctor, but I think something weird happens to your throat when you stop swallowing cum for spots. I really hope Mishnah sticks it out with Mark Barrett. Greg, you self-hating husband. I've never, I've never heard, <laughs> I've never heard anyone hate his wife like Greg hates me. <laughs> yeah. The only reason Greg keeps getting her pregnant is he's hoping she'll die during childbirth. <laughs> That, that still happens, right? Yeah, all the cellar waitresses can't wait to be the sarcastic asshole's girlfriend. Paul, and I'll, all right, I'll do Paul on later. Nick DiPaolo, my old friend, you've out of shape walk on to a Division II school. Division I, University of Maine. But Division out of one. shape and walk on, we're right. That's exactly uh, right. Nick is a man of few words, spit, heap, coon, just to name all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's later, darling. Uh, Colin, you're back, thank God. It's so easy to write for Colin. Uh, most of his jokes end the same. What, nothing? <laughs> People always ask me how I got the job. I did not pull the Vanessa. I... <laughs> I wrote a bunch of jokes, and then to make sure they were in Colin's voice, I went to the bread factory and read them out loud while I binged on mini muffins. Anything articulate that got a laugh got cut. What, nothing? Colin. Colin, I really love you. It's hard to even slam you at all, but to me, you're the worst actor I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen Nick DiPaolo act married. <laughs> Vanessa, that's how you do it. <laughs> Patrice O'Neill. Every uh, single uh, white female comic eventually gets the Patrice O'Neill booty call. How dare you think I would fuck you, Patrice? Patrice accused me of not fucking him because he's black. Yeah, like I'm really attracted to dumb, fat white guys. <laughs> Instead of a dishwasher. Oh, guess who's interrupting again? You must have sensed a good joke. <laughs> Mark my words, Patrice, if I ever find myself trapped beneath you, pinned to the core of the earth by your boulder-like body and your flabby interrupting cock, I will chew off my own cunt to get away from you. <laughs> Ross Bennett had to write this. Oh, shut up, Blackie Arbuckle. <laughs> together and he hit on me the entire trip. Uh, if the thought of fucking Patrice hadn't already made my clitoris shrivel, the thought of fucking you would. <laughs> Nor you're repulsive. I wouldn't fuck you with Jim David's pussy. <laughs> Concerning whore, you fuck so many women, my cock hurts. Every time Jim is on the show, we say the same thing. If only his material was as strong as his chin. <laughs> don't worry, guys. Any weak chin jokes you don't use tonight, you can use at the Ross Bennett Roast. I'm kidding, there will never be a Ross Bennett Roast. <laughs> You're a jinx. First you ended Dice's career, then you killed ONA. You weren't on the phone with Spalding Gray recently, were you? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, Jim really is like an angel. Every time he fucks a hooker, an abortion clinic gets its wings. <laughs> spots on Jim's head, they're puncture wounds from a wire hanger. <laughs> Jim's so ugly that his own mother charged him a hundred bucks 
asked when he came out of her twat. And that was double her normal rate. Thanks a lot. Laurie Kilmarn. Wow. Laurie Kilmarn. Fucking killed Laurie Kilmarn. God, if you can only